edition another episode of the bid nerd your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites my name is john polnick i'm recording this show from the container park in downtown las vegas along with my partner michael deeb in his studio in san francisco we are hundreds of miles away yet it so looks we don't like fight. i could just reach through and uh have it uh, <laughs> wrong side so close <laughs> yeah you had a 50-50 shot to get it right. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, I'm excited about today's episode. Uh, look, we're talking about, we've talked about a couple of cars this week that I don't know anything about. I don't know anything oh, about these spikers. I was I've always counting thought they on were you to awesome. know something about this car. Yeah. That's cool. I, I did. I, I did actually get to ride in one once. So oh, okay. that's something, I guess. Uh, neat ass cars. But uh, there it is. I'm teasing the car of the day. Uh, before we get to today's car, let's uh, give a shout out to our friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you are in the market for a classic Porsche, you know where to find them, right? You go all over these auction sites and you got a bid and you got to scroll and you got to do all this stuff and you don't know what you're getting. Da, 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 da. Skip all that. Just watch our show if you're interested in the auctions. If you actually want a classic Porsche, go see our friends at God and Classic. They've got one for you that you can go test drive. You can fly out, be in Vegas for the weekend with your car, and then they'll ship it back and uh, back to your house. It'll be there waiting for you when you get home. All right. Even better. Today's car is, like we teased ahead, a Spiker. For those of Ooh. you who have never heard of one of these, there's something special. Check this thing out. All right, JP. I was I'm, I'm embarrassed. I it's so funny. I don't know anything about these cars really, and I've seen them in person and whatnot. I've not ridden in one. Um, I know they're special. They're you know they're these beautiful hand built, hand crafted. It's like um, it's kind of like uh, oh, what's that company I'm thinking of that does the Mercedes uh, the Pagani. It's like Pagani and Christopher Runge got together and made a car together. You, you feeling me on that, JP? Kind of, I can see the Rungi vibes. Yeah, this is really cool. So um, what we're looking at here, JP, is on Doug DeMiro's site. It's a 2006 Spiker C8 Spider on cars and bids. And this car was reviewed by Doug DeMiro, which I think will help. Um, because I would not say that just cars and bids solo would be a very good platform for a car that is essentially uber exotic, even if it doesn't bring crazy modern supercar money. Uh, the car is in Los Angeles. It's on a clean title. Um, it only has 3,400 miles on it. It's a two-seat convertible, but it is a mid-engine car. And I'm, my understanding is that it's a 4.2-liter Audi-derived V8 that makes about 400 normally aspirated horsepower and an astonishing 350 pound foot of torque and that's all funneled through a manual six-speed transmission rear wheel drive with a limited slip differential so just on paper this car should be really fun to drive it doesn't look like it would be very heavy um i think they're really cool they're they're beautiful they're they're exquisitely beautiful to the point of being ornate john and i'd say that they're almost like a piece of jewelry it is and this is hard for me to say because i will drive anything i normally don't care about the value but this car looks so nice i would actually think that this would be a difficult car to drive i would not want to drive this car out to uh uh what's what, the sandy route where you know you're you're running in a line of cars and your friends in front of you are kicking up rocks you, you would just you would never do that in this car. It's too nice, and I think it'd be too hard to, to replace parts for. I mean, here's a question for the audience. Is Spiker even still in business? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say I doubt it. But uh, I think these cars are Dutch, John. I really don't know a lot about them. Um, I wish I – it's number 89 out of 121 examples ever made. So I don't know how many years they made the C8 Spider, but they only knocked out 121 of them. This is number 89 out of that. So a rare car by the numbers, but a car that did not take off in value ever after Spiker closes doors, assuming that they close their doors. I just don't know of any new products that are out by Spiker. Really pretty car. I bet it's a hoot to drive. Uh, I'd be scared to wad it or scratch it or mess it up in any way. 
Uh, neat running gear with the Audi motor. Those Aero Blade 19-inch wheels are beautiful on the car. It's got AP racing brakes on it. Uh, Six-speed manual. It's probably a blast. Uh, but too expensive and too rare to drive. So if you love it as uh, as art, you know, would you want to park this uh, next to your Chesterfield couch in your man cave? Hell yes. But for the price they bring, hell no. Uh, so it's just in this weird sort of purgatory of like, yeah, they're kind of worth some money because they're super rare, but you're not really going to drive them and they're not going up in value. So I don't. And and then is Doug DeMiro the right guy to sell your, you know, arguably $300,000 spiker? I there's a lot on this car that's intriguing, um, but there's a lot that's weird about this lot. So considering the platform and the rarity of the car, John, I send it back to you. What would you do with your uh, with your three hundred thousand dollar, three thousand mile Spiker C8 convertible? Would you just drive it and forget about it? Would you offload it and hope that it brings or put it away and think that one day this might be you know worth a million bucks? I I don't. It it hasn't ever happened. So where where are we going? What what are we doing here? You know what I mean? Well, I think, you know, the word you, uh, I think the word bespoke must have come from this car. I mean, every last detail is like machined or perfectly crafted. It's like, you're right. Every yeah, bolt, cool. every, the, the, the turn signal stocks, the, the gear shift levers, the logos, everything is an individual piece of like, a Rolex or something. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it is a lot like a Pagani in that regard, probably more so. I mean, even Pagani has fake seams and stuff like that, you know, where they, they want to make a, a particular body panel look more complex by putting a radius on it or something like that. But this car, everything is as it, it really, if, if there's a vent on this car, it's because it's a real vent and yeah. you know, it, so it, it's interesting that it has an Audi mid engine. So this is kind of an R, uh, R8 predecessor. I wonder if this is what inspired yeah. that. Um, all that said, I you know I have ridden in one and it was pretty neat. But it, well, you know we were just driving around the parking lot. The thing about these cars, they Spiker is gone. They are out of business, and this car is is uh, when when the crash of 2008 happened this is one of the victims spiker was one of those cars like saab and like all the you know bunch of hummer bunch of car companies just couldn't make it past that saab actually i i believe saab owned spiker for a nanosecond and then oh, they wow. gave up on it and then saab was done so yeah. spiker just they just you know they wrong, wrong place wrong time uh, this car, yeah. I think if they would have tried to make this, you know, a few years later, uh, it would have maybe been something, you know, this car is as beautiful as any Pagani I've ever seen. I'd sure love yeah. to actually get behind the wheel and drive one. Like I said, I was yeah. just a passenger and it sounded really neat. It was a neat car. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be afraid to drive it. I mean, if you drive a Pagani, why wouldn't you drive one of these? I'd certainly rather have this than any Bugatti you know, like the, the Chirons and the, and what, yeah. what's the, you know, those are just yeah. so ugly. This thing is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention that I thought was kind of yeah. weird about this car is, you know, me, I'm not a cabriophobe. I love convertibles, right? Uh huh. Note the side windows on this car, the, <laughs> you know, like on most convertibles, you want to roll the windows down, right? That's yeah. when a convertible looks its best when it has a, yeah. you know, this one has that really steep rake to the windshield. It has yeah. no top of the windshield. It just has like a pillars that are, that there's a spike, right? The top yeah, of the like, glass like goal is posts. just, yeah. yeah, it's like a piece of speedster, right? You know, there's, yeah. there's no roof on this. I don't know if it has a soft roof that clips onto that or something like that. But if you look at the actual side windows, you can't roll them down. They've got this little chrome bar that's like halfway up. So that's so you can roll something down to pay the Starbucks cashier or to get your <laughs> McDonald's cheeseburger when you're getting a value meal because you spent all your money on this car and you don't have any money left for food, right? So you got to get yeah. your McNuggets through something. They can't just toss it over the top, I guess. It reminds me of the old Subaru SVX because the, the doors were such a weird shape that they couldn't get the glass to just go down. So they had to make... So, I mean, it just kind of ruins the whole convertible-ness of this car. It would look so better... So much better if you could have that piece of glass go down. But yeah. now it's just, it's a, that's the only design cue that I think is just a complete F up. And it was because 
I, I think there was an engineering solution to that that they just didn't feel like dealing with. And that's kind of sad given how good and uh, how good the rest of it looks and how such a design triumph this car is in every other way, except for that. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Yeah. It'll be interesting, John, to see how this car ages. You know, it's, it's definitely born of a certain era and, um, and, a, you know, a lot of aero went into this. There's a, there's a lot of airplane cues here you from know, a deco, from a, from a yeah. deco, yeah, an aviation deco era inspiration. So it's a very interesting car. Um, it'll be interesting to see if time is kind to this car or not. Um, it's also worth noting, JP, this car was about $297,000 when it was brand new. So that's MSRP for this car. Now, not a lot um, of people it, spending uh, that kind of money in 2008, a or uh, six. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. So 2006 and then, you know, by 2008, yeah. they were, <laughs> I mean, yikes. they were gone at that yeah. point. You could get a CGT for that <laughs> for 300 grand. Right. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Know, so, um, so JP cars like this have transacted for over $300,000. Um, but I don't know if Doug DeMiro is going to get that. I, I really do have a problem with this car on this platform, even being reviewed by Doug himself. Um, I know his audience has continued to grow. Um, even if it's just as gentle as a rising tide. Um, but, uh, but I'm going to say that this car will peter out right around sticker. I don't know if the guy that's, that really has to have this particular specification, this particular one that's in the marketplace is going to pay that 330 to $350,000 premium to cars and bids. So I'm going to give you my guess is that this car is going to go to, I had said 280, but I'm going to go 297 because that's MSRP. And I'm going to, I'm going to guess that it fails to sell at that number um, just to make the conversation after the break more interesting. I don't think if it, if it's Peter's out under 300 grand, I think it fails to sell. That's my point. Yeah. I think that's a good take. I'm going to, I'm going to take the under, I'm going to say, what did you say to, so what is retail? 297. 297. 297. Yeah. I'm just going to go right. I'm going to say 290. Um, yeah. It's going to fail to sell on, on cars and bids. He does not have the, the, he just doesn't have the poop to sell this thing. Just not, sorry, Doug, you're awesome. I know he just got like a, what was it a $37 million uh, investment in his company uh, for cars and bids. I don't know what they're going to do with that money. I don't know how that makes the platform better. Uh, what do they, what does Hopefully cars he'll buy and bids need to make it a better platform? I don't know how millions of dollars will help. Yeah. I hopefully Doug will buy some clothes. Right. I mean, look, <laughs> if they spent that money on saying, okay, we're going to, for every listing, we're going to send a, a photographer out to oh. the car and have them, uh, you know, take some real pictures of each one that, that would be something they could spend the $30 million on or whatever. But I just, I don't see the functionality of cars and bids is just fine. There's no, there's no, there's no engineering thing that needs to be solved there. If they spent the money on advertising, maybe that would make sense to get the, get the platform more, more eyeballs. But I just don't see why the, his company needs uh, needs investment money unless someone was acquiring it. And I don't know the details of that deal. So uh, maybe after the break, we'll find out, but um, all right. Uh, he so, sold a few shares and he, he cashed out and he can go out and buy some cars and you can go you buy know, a spider. I mean, I'd love it if somebody, yeah, somebody gave us hell, we'll take $3,700. I mean, good guy. We're not picky. We're bit this car, this car, not unlike the, uh, the C4 light bow that we talked about uh -huh. in, a, in a previous episode. This car, yeah. I think, suffers from that. Not a lot of people know what these are. And That's so true. there's not a lot of people that are fighting to get one. Um, no. The Porsche, at least, is like if you, as soon as someone that might be scouring through something like BAT, where yeah. everyone is going, they, they might stumble across it and go, oh, this is a rare Porsche. I didn't know what rare Porsche this is. Okay, I'll dig into it and realize the value and go ahead and bid on it. But something like this with fewer eyeballs on cars and bids, I just don't think that stumble across this thing that I've never heard of before. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and spring for $300,000 for it. It's just, I don't see it happening. So what do you guys yeah, think out there? Is this car going to bring the big money? Are we totally wrong? Is big daddy, uh, Doug DeMiro going to bring the money? That's what Hoovy calls Doug DeMiro. Big daddy. I don't know. I don't get that whole, what is Maybe up with Hoovy, Hoovy's garage and Doug DeMiro. There's something weird going on there that no one's really talking about. I don't know. Doug DeMiro is probably six, three. And that's why Hoovy calls him big daddy. I think Hoovy is pretty darn tall too. I don't know. I'm not no, a tall I... person. Either of those guys would look really goofy in this car because their heads would probably stick out above the windscreen. Yeah, they'd get bugs in their teeth. 
All right, guys, hit the subscribe, like, and notification button, and then stick around in 60 seconds. We will actually less than that. I think it's 30 seconds. We're going to tell you what this car, uh, what happens with its auction right after this. Hey, guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. Away. Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Hey, welcome back everyone to the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Back to the bid nerds. This is definitely an interesting car. Michael Deeb, what happened to this weirdo? What do we, do we call this an R8? We call this a Saab 8? I don't know. This, uh, what, oh, what happened with this auction? This is nuts. I'm, uh, these are neat. JP, but I don't know about this one. The, the reality is one of the two of us won, but we both got spanked. Doug DeMiro spanked us. I guess, yeah. you know, it helps when somebody invests $37 million in your platform. Suddenly everybody's paying attention. I really thought this car would suffer with his audience. So I came in at, uh, what did I give you my bid? At 297000 You came in at the under at 290000 Cars and bids sold this car, this Spiker, the 2006 Spiker C8 Spider. Sit down, John. Sit down so you don't fall over. $373,000 on 113 bids. I don't remember ever seeing 100 bids on a lot that we've covered. That could be a record, and we'll have to go back and check our, uh, our, um, you know, all our documents uh, and stuff. But 113 bids, this thing must have gone on and on and on. That's just a that's just a ton of money for this car. Clearly, people were familiar with the car itself, and and you know knew the lot. Doug Demiro reviewed it, and the whole thing, and then he made a big splash that week with his big investment and all this thing. This car just benefited from a perfect storm of all the eyeballs. And then they fought over the car and, and probably set kind of a contemporary high watermark for a used spiker. I mean, there's not that many of them, so they don't transact very often, but boy, the, the seller has just got to be tickled pink and Demiro has got to be beaming, you know, out of both sides of his mouth. So there you go, John, what do you think? I I'm, I'm just dumbfounded. I technically I won, but we got housed on this one. I got just totally hosed. I never saw that coming. That's crazy money. Yeah, I almost think, uh, you know, you had a Yahtzee earlier. I think, uh, well, we our Yahtzees probably should have been taken away from being so wrong on that like foul that we talked about uh, the other day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. This car, it's interesting that you mentioned Doug DeMiro's uh, investment, uh, that $37 yeah. million thing. I don't know what that means. Why? What the hell is he going to do with the $37 million for that platform? They don't need anything you know what are they gonna it's the platform works fine uh he has a an advertising driver i think that's what drove this particular lot and it'd yeah. be interesting to go back and look at any time he actually does a review on a car to yep. see what the results are on the auction and this car was a really big deal i mean it's a it's a really unique and, and awesome car in general yeah. um that i think people kind of forgotten about but the it, raising its profile with a doug demiro uh you know video about it a review definitely it, that had to have helped uh because you know oh, he mentions sure. in that thing oh well, by the way it's for sale you know a couple million people he gets a couple million views on pretty much everything he does so Crazy, right? you know that's why i don't understand the 37 million it's like what what this platform needs what cars and bids needs is a aesthetic drive they need to really push their sellers to take better photos and make better assets to sell their cars. That's about it. Otherwise, functionally, it's fine. So what are you gonna what are you gonna do with that money? Is that going straight in his pocket? I mean, you don't need more developers. <laughs> uh, you could make an argument that okay, they could spend more money advertising that the that the site exists. That would definitely help. But you don't need thirty seven million dollars to do that. Um, you know, you could spend. $10 million and raise the profile of the, of, of that channel, uh, or not just channel, but the pl pr platform, uh, enough to do something, I guess. But I don't know if there's a, I don't know if you get that big a return on it. I, I just don't, I don't understand. What do you think of this investment? What the hell, 
it, what are it's they interesting, do with right? It? So, like, let, let's just I, and I forget. I I know I read the, the the tear sheet, but I you know I think they bought like forty one percent of the company or something like that for the thirty seven million dollars. They're also you know a lot of that money is going to go into his personal YouTube channel. Um, and so they get a piece of that as well, mm. but yeah, the pres- the presumption so it was a pure is pure equity buy. It wasn't really an investment. Right. It was just somebody. He's right. just ca- this, is this so. a cash yeah. out? Is that what this is? He, I guess right. I mean, now he's got thirty seven million dollars in his pocket, and he gives forty cents on the dollar to everything he makes to back to that company. I I still think that's great for him. Uh, for whatever it's worth, uh, JP, I don't remember the exact number, but I believe Bring a Trailer sold a couple of years ago to um, Hearst Media. And I think that purchase price was like $66 million or $60 million, yeah. something like that. That's what I remember from a couple of years ago. So $37 million two years later for, for a portion of Doug DeMiro's site? I mean, damn, that's like good for yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just weird. I mean, it just it seems like that he probably could have easily gotten that uh, or more uh, six months ago because, I mean, let's be honest, the – uh-oh, sorry, guys. Uh, our system just uh, did a weird thing. Uh, that's great. Um, yeah. What, what I think uh, is so great is that your wife cuts this up and she's going to be like, who's Taylor Lilly? <laughs> Dude. Sure, Sorry, everyone. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, check out the Rami show coming up. Uh, we shot uh, Taylor's Ferrari over the weekend. That's going to be oh, a cool very episode. Cool. Is that the a, white one? The white yeah, yeah, the 458. Eight. Yeah. 458? Yeah, 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 what did I say? Three, very right, cool yeah, car. That's great. Um, yeah, no, it's look, this, uh, this whole thing, where were we with the 37 million bucks? I mean, as an equity, but to invest in Doug DeMiro's site, I just don't know what the investors angle is here. I definitely see the appeal to DeMiro cause he just gets a big check, but what yeah. are those, you know, what are those venture guys going to get out of it? I mean, what, what, what do they think? Where do they see the expansion of this company? Do they really see, I mean, how do you get $37 million back from, from this? Because I know, right. you know, what were we talking about? Bring a trailers sales that, you know, they broke a billion dollars or something like that, but that's gross. Right. That's not net. At that's all. not net. You know, it's a, it's their, yeah. their revenue is a fraction of that because they only get yeah. what 4.5% of any given yeah. sale. Uh, so you can kind of figure back it out. But the thing is it caps at what? 5,000 bucks yeah. on BAT. Yeah. So yeah, which is weird. So, you know, how, okay, great. They're gross in a billion, but what are they actually? Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Or wait yeah. a minute. I mean, I guess they're not they're not transacting the sales of those cars. So do they really make a billion dollars? I mean, that's crazy. Uh, that's I, how many cars they got to sell. I think they tripped a billion dollars worth of cars. So billion dollars. It was a billion cars dollars worth of car sales, but it wasn't a billion yeah, dollars yeah, worth yeah, of yeah, sales that. through their company. So yeah. what was their actual revenue? You like what what you got to figure is like how many cars did they sell? Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, what's the actual revenue of of something like the cars and bids? Yeah. nowhere remotely close to that. No. I, I don't see but, how the investors get their 37 million bucks back, but I know that there's a they, YouTube video. They might have there. Some, yeah. They might have some big plans and, and they might unfold some other marketing things that we just don't know yet. We'll, we'll see. They clearly have a, a you know, major stake in the company. So, uh, they believe in him and, and his reach, which I think is, you know, like I said, kudos to him. It's shocking, honestly, that he didn't that they didn't buy the whole damn company for thirty seven million bucks. Well, that I mean, that's you know, it's like okay, question. you give him did 5%, they get forty percent or fifty percent? Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I forget. I read it like a week ago, so I just it was, none of it really stuck because I don't care. What do you guys think of the results of this spiker, and what do you guys think of the results of the equity play that's just happened with uh, yeah. with Educate cars us. and bids? Do you think uh, cars and bids is going to get drastically better as a platform or do you think it's pretty much going to stay the same what could they what could doug demiro possibly do with any amount of money to make the platform better i can tell you what he we, should do is he could afford now to send a professional photographer out to, to everyone, every sale to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like that yeah. would improve we, the site we also we also know he's not going to go out and buy new clothes right he'll just yeah. keep wearing t-shirts and cargo shorts what does that guy do with money i don't, I don't get it all right guys let us know what you think in the comments below and we will see you tomorrow on the most interesting car of the day what it will be tomorrow on bid nerd see you guys no!